second greatest question of life was asked by the ancient psalmist, What is man that thou art mindful of him? In importance, this query is next only to that concerning the nature of God. Inability to answer this question has often defeated fervent faith. The correct answer has enabled men and nations to build their futures securely. Faith in God is the most, has been most effective when accompanied by an understanding of man's relationship to deity. The way out of the world tragic chaos, the terror of poverty, sickness, and war, be illuminated by a comprehension of man's nature and destiny. Man is one of the eternal, imperishable realities of the universe. His story begins in the infinite past, before the earth was made. His eternity reaches into the yesterdays as into the tomorrows. He belongs to the endless ages. In the beginning, man was with God, a child of God, begotten by him. He has a divine pedigree. In the pre-existent spiritual domain, as his son or daughter of the Divine Father, he increased in knowledge and power and grew in spiritual stature. At length he was prepared for the earth career and willing to accept its conditions. Man is not an accidental or a transient invader of earth. Instead, he's a creature of plan and progress. Man is a child of God, therefore he partakes of the divine nature of his father. Within him lie germs of infinite development. Potentially he is a godlike being, therefore he may rise eternally, eternally toward the likeness of his father in heaven. Upward, divine, unending, is man's high destiny. The long climb of man from the dim beginning to the noble present came from self-effort, guided and directed by God. His future ascent into glorious realms beyond human understanding will likewise result from his own strivings and struggles. True man lives and moves and has his being under the law of progression. But progress is ever an inward, not an outward process. His increasing progress is not imposed upon him. Salvation is a cooperative enterprise between God and man. All men are the very children of God, the race of men are brothers. Every man, however humble, of whatever race, has the same origin and possible destiny. The heavens and the earth were made, and the plan of salvation was provided for each individual member of the human family. God is not a partial father. Each child is alike in his love. Since the plan of salvation is for all, it is fully consummated only when it has been, been accepted by all. Therefore, it becomes a common concern to save every soul. Hence, every man bears responsibility for his brother. Were this conception, which raises individual man to immeasurable importance, more fully comprehended, there will come great modification of man's treatment of man. The inhumanity of man would soon vanish from the earth. The law of the beast would be replaced by the law of God. Love would triumph over hate. The record of history declares that nations which have recognized in part the true nature of man have prospered most and survived the longest. The little men who seek to take advantage of one another, rulers who look upon their people as pawns in their great game, nations which wantonly cause thousands in the battle to be maimed or killed, these would falter in their evil designs before a knowledge of the divine origin and destiny of every human being.
of his God achieving power. Righteousness will increase in the earth. We prattle about the brotherhood of man, but true fraternity can be realized only upon the acceptance of all men as our very brothers, possessing equal right with us. There should be a comprehension of innate greatness of every dweller on earth, of the possible attainment by the humblest man of an infinitely high goal. Such knowledge, widespread over the earth, would refine individual conduct, make men take thought before action, and would help bring about peace, the world's greatest need. A sense of individual responsibility grows out of an understanding of man's relationship to men and to God. The world is in serious need of a compelling sense of personal, individual responsibility. As men are, so is a social group. A righteous nation is but the assemblage of righteous men. National prosperity is but the sum of personal prosperity. When each man sets his own house in order, the whole world will be in order. There is much talk, talk of governmental and other organized provisions for our wants, material and spiritual, when in reality our greatest needs must be satisfied from within ourselves, to lean upon others for support in feeble to soul. By self-effort, man will attain his high destiny. It cannot be placed upon, as a cape upon his shoulders by others. Upon his own feet, he must enter the kingdom of God, whether on earth or in heaven. By conquest of self, he shall win his place in the everlasting glory of God's presence. What is man that thou art mindful, uh, mindful of him? He is the very son of God, endowed with God-like power, who, if he respects his divine origin and high destiny, may bring to pass the long-sought reign of righteousness upon the earth. 